Hey boys and girls, it's me, Brie here, and I am so excited about what's gonna be happening today. But first, let's go check out our wacky facts. For today's wacky fact, did you know that a sea lion is the only animal that has legit rhythm and can clap on beat? And did you also know that a hippopotamus has pink milk when they're feeding their baby? Could you imagine drinking milk that's the color of Pepto? <laughs> that's wacky. <laughs> Let's go check out our Bible lesson. For today's Bible lesson, we are learning a super cool Bible story about Joseph. So let's get started. Joseph came from a very large family. I'm talking 11 siblings and his dad, Jacob. Man, he loved Joseph. It was actually his favorite, so much so that his dad made him a beautiful coat. I mean, it was long, had so many colors in it. It was a really cool coat. And, and he made him the coat on top of being his favorite. So his brothers were super jealous. They were like, not only is, J is Joseph your favorite, but now you made him this beautiful coat. You didn't make us one. Man, oh, I don't like that kid. And so he's wearing his coat around town. He's walking around proud of this gift from his dad. And he's in the field one day with his brothers. And he walks up and he's like, hey guys, man, I wanna tell you this really cool dream. All the while he's wearing his really cool coat. And so he walks up and he's like, hey, so I had this really cool dream last night that there was like this wheat and they were all bowing down to me, all this like stalks of wheat and they were bowing down. And then I had another dream where the sun, moon, and 11 stars, they bowed to me down, or they bowed down to me as well. Isn't that cool, guys? And they were like, not so cool, Joseph, but yeah, whatever. You're weird, kid, whatever. And they were rude to him, right? They kind of brushed him off, pushed him off. But then, all of a sudden, they kind of got this idea in their head that they were gonna do something to Joseph. They just had to get rid of him. He was annoying, he was dad's favorite. They weren't getting all the attention. They were not nice. So what they did is they waited till Joseph was kind of distracted and they got him and they threw him down a well. It was like a deep, deep long hole where he can't get out. And so he's in that hole and they're outside, they're laughing. Oh, look at you, you're down in the hole. And they're waiting for these people to come by and they buy slaves. And so they these people came by and the brothers were like, hey, I have a slave for sale, I have a slave for sale. And it was really Joseph, their brother. And they sold him into slavery and they got to have all the money. So after Joseph was gone, they had to think about it. Okay, well now that we got that problem solved, now we have to take care of dad. Hell yeah, we know he's his favorite, so we gotta make sure that he doesn't know we had anything to do with getting rid of Joseph. So what they did is they took that beautiful coat, they took it off Joseph and they ripped it and they just ripped it to shreds and then they poured animal blood on it and they brought it to the dad and was like, I don't know what happened. He got attacked by an animal and he's dead. And so it broke Jacob's heart, Joseph's dad, broke his heart because that was his favorite son, destroyed the gift that he had given him and he was grieving. His son was dead, was no more, so he thought. So let's see where Joseph is. So Joseph right now was just sold into slavery and he's bound in chains. And he's walking through this hot desert and he's walking bound in chains. And the thing is, is he had no idea where he was going. And he ends up in a land called Egypt. Yeah, Egypt, the one with the pyramids. Yeah, that place, super far away. He ends up there in Egypt, sold into slavery. So when he gets there, he actually has to end up serving in this guy's house and his name was Potiphar. And Potiphar was a really big like governmental official and he worked right under Pharaoh. And Pharaoh was like the leader of the land of Egypt, right? And so Potiphar, he was kind of a semi-good dude, right? So he's working for Potiphar and he's doing his job and he's doing what he needs to do. But again, he's a slave, so he's not comfortable at all. This isn't what 
he had in mind for his life, right? But God had a plan. So he's in Potiphar's house, he's working hard, working hard, and all of a sudden, Potiphar's wife lied on Joseph. So she said such a big lie, so much so, that Potiphar sided with his wife and he threw Joseph in prison. So not only was Joseph thrown in a hole by his brothers, sold into slavery, walked across a hot desert, and now he's been lied on and thrown in prison. So he's thrown in prison and he's just behind bars and he's like, man, God, I trust you. And the Bible says that through all of this, the Lord was with him, never left him, even though he was in prison. And even though it got really bad, God never left him. So he's in prison and all that kind of stuff. But while in prison, he's still Joseph. He's still a nice guy. So he begins to obtain favor with the guards. And what that means is that in the prison, the guards let him help out, right? Let him do chores around the prison. So that way he wasn't behind bars the whole time, but of course, still in prison. So he was doing all these chores and all this kind of stuff. And then all of a sudden he came across these two guys and one was a baker and one they called a cupbearer. And you're like, what's a cupbearer? Well, let me tell you, a cupbearer is someone who poured drinks in a cup and served it to Pharaoh, to the king, right? And that's what, that was his main job. And so these two men were thrown in prison right next to who? To Joseph. And so they were spending time in there and chatting it up, talking about their day, talking about why they're in there, all those types of things. And one morning, these guys wake up, the baker and the cupbearer, they wake up, they're just stressed out. You could tell that they did not sleep. They had a rough night. And so Joseph, being the nice guy that Joseph was, he's like, hey, what's wrong? Y'all look super tired and stressed out like you didn't get any sleep. What happened? What's up? So the cupbearer said first, he said, well, I had this really weird dream. And Joseph was like, well, I love dreams. Let me hear it. So the cupbearer's dream was that there were these vines of grapes and they were being squeezed into a big cup. Get it? Cup bear, right? So that was his dream. So these grapes were being squeezed into a cup and that was his dream. And the baker's dream was that there was three bowls on top of his head and there were these birds eating the bread out of these bowls on top of his head. So the baker and the cupbearer told him these dreams and Joseph was like, do you want to know what they mean? And they, these guys were like, yes, we're so restless. We didn't sleep at all. And he was like, well, let me start with the cupbearer. So the cupbearer, let me tell you what yours is. Yours means that you're going to be in that same position again. You're going to get out and you're going to be able to serve the king again. And so the cupbearer was like, yes, I'm going to get released from prison. But then to the baker. So Joseph was like, well, dude, let me tell you what your dream means. So that actually means that you're going to die in three days. The baker was like, oh, well, that's not a very good, peaceful uh, conversation here. Joseph was like, yeah, I'm sorry, man. And what happened? It came true. The cupbearer got released and well, we know what happened to the baker. So, but Joseph was right, right? God had a plan. God had been telling Joseph the outcomes of dreams since way before he was in slavery. So God was making his life have a plan from the beginning. And remember, God did not leave Joseph through this whole time. And so Joseph was like, hey, to the cupbearer, hey, whenever you get out, could you tell Pharaoh that I was lied on and, and you know, that I need to get out basically. Cupbearer was like, oh yeah, I got you, man, I got you. So the cupbearer gets out and guess what happens? He forgets to tell him about Joseph. I know, so Joseph is like, man, I just helped you and you forgot, but okay, I'm gonna sit here because I'm trusting God. He's still with me, he still has a plan. So two more years went on and all of a sudden, Pharaoh went to sleep and he woke up one morning and he was like, whoa, these dreams I just had were loco, were crazy. They were insane. <sighs> I need to figure this out. So you know what he does? He goes on a quest and he gets all these people surrounding him. He gets priests and he gets magicians and he gets just a lot of very different people. And he sits them down, he has a meeting and he says, okay guys, these are my dreams. Tell me what they mean. Silence. 
no one knew what they meant. So the cupbearer, right, serving drinks to the king, he's like, hey, so I forgot, but I met this dude while I was in prison, and he's like really good with dreams. So he told me I was getting out, and I did, so do you want him to maybe have a listen? Pharaoh's like, yes, can you please? Why didn't you see that sooner? So all of a sudden the guards go down and they get Joseph out of prison and he comes back up and he's like, how can I serve you? And so Pharaoh tells him the dreams. These are crazy dreams. Have you ever had a crazy dream and you wake up and you're just scratching your head like that did not make any sense at all? Well, keep listening because these will blow your socks off. So he had a dream that there were seven fat cows and there were seven skinny cows and that the skinny cows ate the fat cows. Yeah, that was his dream number one. Number two was that there were these vines and they were beautiful. And then on the sides of the vines were these not so beautiful vines that grew up and they were just dark and dehydrated and they ate the good vines. I know there's a lot of eating going on, but that was the crazy wacky dreams that was going on. So he told Joseph this and Joseph thought about it and he prayed about it and he said, okay, this is what this means. This means that there's gonna be seven years of plenty of food and there's gonna be seven years of a famine. Famine means nothing can grow, there's no way you can get food, it's just no good. So, seven years of plenty, seven years of famine. Man, Pharaoh was so grateful to Joseph. He was like, man, thank you. Now I have clarity, I had all these people here and you just solved this and you've been in prison this whole time. Oh man, you gotta come out, you gotta come out. You just helped this whole land. And you know what, because you helped me, I am going to make you number two. I'm gonna make you second in command right under me. And the only one that has more power than you is me. And Joseph was like, what, for real? I get out of prison and I'm number two in command? Remember how I told you in the beginning that God had a plan? Yes, so throughout all this, quick recap. So Joseph, he gets sold into slavery. His brothers lie to his dad. He gets transferred to a whole just unfamiliar land. He gets thrown in prison. His friend tells him, hey, I'll let you out. He waits another two years. He's out and now he's, he's here. He's number two in power. Man, that's super cool, right? And so Joseph's job was to prepare the land for the famine. So his job was to gather as much food, organize it, save it, so that way when the seven years of famine come, he can ration the food and make sure that no one goes hungry. That was his job. And not only was the famine in Egypt, but it was in some of the surrounding lands as well. And so, here we are, we're having the good first seven years of plenty. There's plenty of food, there's more, there's tons for everyone. But Joseph knew that those seven years of famine was coming. So he was gathering food, storing it, organizing it, right? And here comes the seven years of famine. And so people aren't going hungry because what did Joseph do? He did his job, right? He organized the food, so he's rationing, he's giving out the food during this famine. And all of a sudden he sees these faces. He's like, oh, I know who these are. And guess what? It was his brothers who sold him into slavery. Yeah, crazy, right? They're in the line because their land is out of food too. So they came all the way to Egypt to get food because they knew that someone was handing out food. Little did they know it was Joseph. And it had been so long that they forgot what Joseph looked like, but Joseph did not forget what they looked like. So they get in the land and he had a choice right here. He had a choice to say, I'm not giving them any food. They sold me into slavery. They did me wrong. They took my life away. They moved me from my dad, from my best friend. They took away my coat, but he didn't do that. He didn't reveal himself at first. He wanted to ask questions. He wanted to test them. And so he said, how many's in your family? And he wanted to see if they would even include him in their family again. And so they said, well, you know, there's 10 of us, but we had another brother and, you know, we did him so wrong and we feel so bad about it. And man, if we could just get one more chance to undo what we did and undo this wrong, man. Oh, I just, I, I wish he was here, you know, so, so we could get forgiveness and, you know, we, we just feel so bad about it. So Joseph, 
He looked at them and he was like, man, they're sincere. They really feel bad about that situation. They feel bad about doing this to me. And man, he chose kindness and compassion. And he said, hey guys, it's me. Yeah, the guy you're talking about? Yeah, it's me, I'm Joseph. And they were like, whoa, whoa, you're like a ruler. You're like number two in command. This is crazy, what are you talking about? What, what, what? And they were just losing their mind because they were so grateful that he was alive and well, right? But remember, God always had a plan. And so he gives them food and he says, I wanna talk to my dad. Does my dad know that I'm alive? And they were like, no, he doesn't. So they went back and they got his dad and they brought him and it was like the best family reunion ever. I mean, there were hugs, there were tears, there was probably a lot of catching up and just a lot of love and forgiveness that was happening in that moment. And man, one thing was true throughout this whole thing. God never left Joseph through being in a hole, through being lied on, in slavery, in prison, throughout all of this stuff, God never left Joseph. And I wanna remind you, sometimes we're gonna go through things that feel bad, that sometimes will not make sense. Sometimes when you get older, someone might try to lie on you or do you wrong or make you feel really bad. But let me remind you, that just like God never left Joseph, he will never leave you. He will be with you in the good, in the bad, in the ugly, in the great, and he always has a plan for you. In Jeremiah 29, 11, it says, for I have a plan for you, plans to give you hope and a future. And that, yes, it's talking about you. You have hope, you have a strong future. Be like Joseph and never give up on God and trust his plan always. Now is the time for strengths to be tested, for pride to be demolished and for you to do whatever it takes to overcome your fears and become the hero of your own story. Okay, maybe too far, but do you know what time it is? It's game time. We are about to play Pencil Pincher and what you need for this game is lots of pencils and you need an empty container like a bowl or something to drop your pencils in. And how you play this game is very simple. You have to get two pencils, one under your nose, one under your chin, tuck it under there real tight, no hands, and we're racing from this table all the way over to that table and you have to drop it in that container again using no hands and the person with the most pencils at the end of 60 seconds is the winner so let's go I hope you can do better than that. Good luck. We are about to make a crazy craft and it's gonna be super fun. So make sure that you get all your supplies and I'll meet you there. We are going to start our crazy craft right now. So make sure you get all your supplies and let's make mama's mug. So the first thing you're going to need is painter's tape, a piece of cardstock paper, a pair of scissors, a blank mug, preferably white, so you have a blank canvas, and then oil-based Sharpies and an oven at home. So let's jump in and see how we make it. 
So I went ahead and did the first step. As you can see, this blue heart right here on my mug. This is how I did it. So I got a piece of cardstock paper and I cut out a heart with my scissors and then I put uh, the painter's tape around it so that way it would stick to my mug for like a stencil. So after you have that completed just like this, then we are going to start our design with our oil-based Sharpies. And it's very important that they're oil-based. You can't use regular markers on this, okay? So this is Mama's mug. Now, after you take your oil-based Sharpies and you kind of design what I did is I just, you know, dot it all over it. Then the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna let it dry and then we're gonna peel off this sticker and see Mama's mug. Well, that took what seemed like forever to dry, but it's dry. So the next thing you're gonna wanna do is peel off this little fancy sticker right here, and then we can see our wonderful art. If you have any weird edges, you can go ahead and just clean it up. It'll just come right off. And so you just clean up all your edges. Okay, and voila. So after you have your mug completely finished just like this, you have to put it in the oven, into a cool oven, and then set it on 250 degrees and let it stay in there for two hours. Yes, it takes a while, but you want mom or whoever you give it to to be able to keep it forever and be able to wash it. So this is a very important part. So again, put it in a cool oven, set it at 250, let it sit in there for two hours, but don't take it out when the two hours is up. You have to wait till it cools completely down and make sure you're doing that specific part with an adult present. So 
I hope you enjoy and make sure you give it from the heart. I had loads of fun with you today, and I hope you did too, and I would love to hear what you think about it, or your week, or your day, or whatever you want to tell me. So how you do that is you send me an email to talk to Brie at destinykids.tv. And if you want more videos just like this, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe right here to our YouTube channel, hit all the buttons, and I'll see you next time right here on Destiny Kids.